Got him that time. That was awesome. The fishing here at Crooks is nothing shy of outstanding. Epic for sure. You put it in the right spot and you're gonna you're gonna be rewarded with a good fish. All right, that's a good sized fish too. Giant Eastern Brook Trout, got your attention? How about on dry flies? This week we're in Labrador and Brook Trout is our quarry. I'm Bill Spicer, this is the new Fly Fisher. That is amazing. There's a take. Oh, nice. The power, all right. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orbis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, On today's show, the new Fly Fisher crew visits Crooks Lake Lodge, located 60 miles southeast of Goose Bay, Labrador, on the famous Upper Eagle River watershed just south of the Mealy Mountains. Here, you can experience the ultimate in trophy brook trout fishing in one of Canada's last unspoiled frontiers. Chris Sinclair of Crooks Lake Lodge will guide me this week. Don't let his youth fool you, he's one of the most knowledgeable fly fishers I've met. We are here at the prime dry fly season and Chris has promised us lots of action. I'm using a smallmouth bass taper on a streamer rod is simply because the smallmouth bass taper is designed to throw heavier flies, streamer flies. It's designed for that. I always adjust the drag so that if I can easily pull it out, but there is resistance, so you don't get a bird's nest a backlash. So that's where I start. Now, if it becomes a big fish and I need to adjust it, I can adjust it easily. Now, see what I'm doing here, folding over the line? You fold over the line and draw it through, and I'll show you why we fold it over. Now, if I pull here and I let go, the line stops. That's why we fold it over when you're stringing your rod. just got here, we're down below what they call a rattle, which is all these rocks up here under the riffles uh, and rapids. And we're in the pool number three below it, and we're seeing some rising fish. Now they're really subtle right now, just a little sip on top. We have a big mayfly and a bunch of caddis flies coming off right now. I've got a Goddard caddis on right now, I'm gonna try that and uh, see what happens. I'm stoked about this. Uh, I've, I've been on this river before when it's like this and it can be epic. Got him. 
<laughs> I seen him, he rose just right behind it. Ooh, it's not giving me a chance to get him on my reel. So I'm gonna have to fight him this way until I get control of him and keep a tight line. Ha <laughs> ha! Now, he's gonna fight now because he's gonna realize the boat is here. There he goes. Keep a tight line on him. It's important if you can to get him on the reel as quick as possible. As possible, if he starts running at you, you gotta strip the line in. Okay. Beautiful fish. It's a nice fish. Yep, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was gonna love this place, Chris. I knew I was gonna love it. Oh no, it's a great spot for dry fly fishing, for sure. See if I can get his head up. Good man. Oh my goodness. I am extremely excited about this. Dry fly fishing for giant eastern brook trout. Nothing beats it. I've been here approximately 15 minutes. Giant eastern brook trout on a dry fly. A size 12 Goddard caddis. Outstanding. You have to come to Crooks Lake Lodge in Labrador. Uh, dry fly fishing, uh, you can get them on streamers, but right now we got a mayfly hatch and a caddis fly hatch at the same time, and the fish are rising. Why wouldn't you take them on a dry fly? <laughs> This week at Crooks Lake Lodge, we're uh, experiencing caddis fly hatches anywhere from size uh, 12 to 16 or 18. Um, and we're experiencing some mayfly spinner, spinner falls still. So we're on the tail end of the, some of the mayfly. And there's also some mayfly duns around size, you know, size 12 to, to 16 and some smaller blue wing olives. Um, generally here, any small brown mayfly imitation works really well. Bill. See him? Yeah. See him? Yeah. Yep. Got him. You see that mouth come right out of the water on that one. Good fish, taking line on me. Woo -hoo. Big head shakes. Big head shakes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Look at the tail on it. Oh, it's good fish. That's a nice, really nice fish, Bill. Good work. Yeah. Anytime a fish wants to run, you let them. Let them fight the drag. Don't, don't hold on for dear life. It's one of the biggest mistakes I see novice fly fishers do is grab on the line and hold on for dear life. The drag is there for a reason. It's, it's meant to, oh, to unwind like that at a controlled pace. Ooh. Still got lots of fight in him, man. Holy yeah, he's still, he's still, yeah. He wants to run, I let him run. When he stops stops running, that's when I pump him back to me. No, you're doing great, Oh, Bill. that's a big fish. Shorter fish, but definitely has a girth. Yeah. Just a second, oh, there we go. Uh, I'll get him back, get his head there. There, he there we go. Oh, Good he's a, man. He's a heavy fish. It played longer than I thought it was. It, it, I thought it was a much larger fish, but it's still a very respectable fish right now but on a dry fly. That's the best part. Oh. There you go, Bill. All right. Oh, man. If you pick them up and don't squeeze them, they, they generally stay pretty quiet. Okay, I'm gonna put them back in. I'm gonna let the guide release them.
I like rustic. I like simple. The lodge and the accommodations are just enough for, for me. I don't like to overdo it. I want to be able to run around in shorts and, you know, barefoot when it's warm and, uh, you know, come in my pajama bottoms when it's cold, right? So it was very welcome and comfortable in that sense. What I found about this little point of the lake is it's almost like we're on a little island. We're, I feel like we're on a little island here amongst uh, the big trees and the big water, right? But it's just us. So it's kind of a, a pleasant, serene setting, I think, if you will. Fishing is very spiritual to get away from uh, the big city lights and the, the sound of uh, jets. You know, we get to hear a couple of bush planes from time to time, but the experience to me is serene because we came out. I don't know if I cast more, if I swatted more mosquitoes, but I can tell you that every minute of the week for me was relaxing and rewarding as something I, I needed. I needed to get away from the big city. The main lodge overlooks the lake and consists of a dining and lounge area, three double bedrooms, and a screened-in porch. The power is generated and there's also Wi-Fi and telephone services. Got him. Finally got him. Yeah. Is that on the emerger? I'm not sure. Oh, I think it's on the dry. You'd see the dry in the air. Yeah. If it was on the emerger. Took a while, but just persevere and get you what you the today over any other day that I've been here, we gotta be super accurate with your with your cast. This is awesome. Good fish too. Starting to get colored up a bit. Yeah. It's a little early for them to be colored though, isn't it? Yeah, the males will definitely turn before the females. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, the ones we have been catching, got a couple of females. That's on the uh, emerger. It's on the emerger, is it? Yeah, it's on the soft tackle emerger. We're running a two fly system here, a, a dry fly and an emerging uh, caddis uh, pattern right underneath it, about six to eight inches away from the dry fly. So we're giving them two presentations. We're seeing, uh, Two different rises happening today. One is they're actually uh, taking a dry fly, which is a big splash. And the other is uh, emerging, where we only see the, the back of, the, of the, the fish itself come out. Back and maybe the tail taking something underneath. And that's what this fish did. He's using the current to his advantage right now. We have a lot of fish rising at this particular moment. I've just looked over down from us and I just saw three fish rise. So this, this should be a really good day. He's going a little crazy. These have got a lot of fight to them, huh? Well, this is a real pretty fish. I'll see if I can get his head up. Good man, good man. Woo this is fun. This is real fun. If you have a fish rising upstream from you, and you must get a cast from downstream, it's important to have a drag-free drift. Cast as normal, drop it, and be sure to take in your line as it comes towards you. This will ensure you have a tighter line on the fish, but your fly doesn't drag. It makes it a lot easier to set the hook on the fish. Yeah. If there's a rising fish downstream of you, such as that near that submerged rock, again, you must have a drag-free drift a similar cast can be used. Stop it high, let it drop, and as the fly floats down over the fish, you have to ensure that you have a drag-free drift, and sometimes you have to feed it line. Now as you're feeding line out, it's really important not to move your fly. You let your fly sit, and as you feed line out, you wanna wiggle your rod and feed line from your hands in your slack, and if you need a longer drift, you pull line off your reel and continue feeding it. Another cast you can use is a reach cast. A normal cast, and as you push forward, 
reach across upstream that also gives you a nice drag free drift. Oh, he came up beneath it. He Did looked you see at, that? He looked at it. I saw, I saw the colors. That's crazy, man. I don't know where it is. Oh, got him. I just, I just struck when I seen the fish come up. Yeah. Good, <laughs> good hooks at Bill. Yeah. Nope. Sometimes you have to use primal instinct. <laughs> yeah. Didn't know where the, where the fly was. I, it disappeared on me. It's a real good fish. I think that was on the dry fly. I'm not sure. We'll see in a second here. Yeah, it's on the dry. I don't see the... Uh. No, nope, nope, it's the on the emerger. Again. Yeah. On and the emerger. And you swear it was a dry fly take, wouldn't you? Yeah, the way he came up. Yeah. But he hit it on the way up. That's what he did, and he just couldn't stop. Fish rolling everywhere. Yeah, they're all over the place. Looks like he took it well. Yeah, he, he, he ate that. He definitely ate it. Yeah. Trying to turn his head. Mm, tough, eh? I don't want to make a stab at him. Nope. Woo! -hoo. <laughs> Just about had a wet guide. <laughs> I'd rather get wet than break them off. <laughs> you ever hear the limbo, Labrador limbo? That's what that's called. <laughs> Labrador limbo, that's a good one. That's a new one to me. Yeah, I thought he was ready to come in and he just. Yeah, these, these fish fight hard. Yeah, they do. They yeah. don't give up. Okay, he feels like he's getting close. Or she, I think this one is. Keep your head up. Good man, outstanding. While seeking brook trout, it's important to look for structure. Areas such as this rock is a perfect example. The current comes down and meets the rock, forms a hydro cushion which allows the fish to lay there easily and it acts as a conveyor belt for food. Got him. Clank hammer. <laughs> Emerger pattern. Now, listening to your guide is important. He just suggested we gotta, they're hitting emergers, they're not hitting dry flies. So let's switch over to what's called a clank hammer, which it worked. First uh, outstanding. <laughs> One of those things you just play at the vise and kind of tie something that, oh, that kind of looks like a caddis, or though that kind of might look like a mayfly emerger, you know? Yeah. Kind of a general emerger pattern. And What the point is, it's laying lower in the water. These fish are taking something just under the surface, so listening to your guide really pays off. We've been watching that guy rise for the last 10 minutes, eh? Yes, and, and just experimenting and figuring out what they're doing, you, and, and the rise itself is what's important. Can you comment on that, Chris? Well, you really have to read the rise. Um, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to tell, but okay, like for a dry fly rise, a, a dull caddis rise, you know it's usually pretty splashy. Uh, they come up, the head comes right out of the water. Um, can be quite, quite aggressive. And then with an emerger rise, you'll just see uh, the dorsal come out and the tail, you see, or the flick of the tail. It just depends on how high the emerger is in the water Correct. when he takes it. So it's a big part of fly fishing is reading the rise, especially for dry fly fishing. And uh, it, makes a, it makes a difference as it shows right here. Clink hammer. I think we found the fly for the day. Gonna have to go back and tie some more of them. <laughs> yeah. Let me get below you here, Bill. It's yes, sir. Like a good fish. I mean, Looks like good. a decent fish. Yeah, they're all good fish. He's not ready yet. Uh, back Still kind of green. Doing the Labrador limbo again. <laughs> <laughs> the big, there is bigger ones in here. Oh, for sure. 
Uh, the replica that's in the lodge, how heavy was that one? That one was, uh, that was 26 inches and it was uh, around eight pounds. Around eight pounds. Yeah, and that was in the spring. It was, uh, so as the summer progresses, they get a little heavier. Yes, they feed up and get thicker. Yeah. Fatten up for the winter time. Oh yeah, need that energy to produce the spawn yep. for next year's uh, young. Ooh. Oh, that time, fish won. Yep. What can I say, but. <laughs> yeah, great job. That's why they call it uh, fishing, not catching, Bill. That's for sure. I caught a six and a quarter pound brook trout on a little tiny caddis fly. And I'm not an avid fly fisherman, and it was a fish of a lifetime. And I would have to say, one becomes jaded just catching four pound and four and a half pound trout. There's so many of them here. I've never seen so many big fish. It is just a thrill, even if you're not catching them, just seeing them porpoising, there are fish everywhere so that uh, if you're not catching fish, it's your fault, not, 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 not the place's fault. And I, I caught a ton of fish and just enjoyed myself. My arm is sore from uh, reeling them in, so. Got him. Yes, sir. Big tail. Big tail. Nice slow rise, huh? Slow rise, subtle take. No big splashy take on this one. He doesn't even realize he's now, he's, he's getting the idea that he's, he's hooked now. Another good fish, great fish, big tail on it. And he's going for a run. Exciting, <laughs> doing a limbo. <laughs> now, sometimes, oh, he's by that rock. There we go. Sometimes when they get stuck in one spot and they don't want to move, pluck this like a guitar string, goes right down into their mouth and they'll move. It works every time. An old guy years ago to told me that. These fish have got a lot of heart. They might come up and be a smaller fish or one not as big as I thought, but still, this is incredible. You are good, buddy. <laughs> you are good. You get him? I'm gonna get into the water on this one. This is a big fish, it's about seven pounds. Uh, I wanna get in there, get close. I can handle them, uh, for some reason, you can handle a fish easier when they're closer to the water. By bringing it in the boat, they're much dip more difficult to handle, so I'm gonna get in the water. Look at this. That is a giant eastern brook trout. A lot of heart to this fish, look at that, huge. The flies that were most successful this week for Bill were El Caracatus in sizes 12 through 16, Caddis Emergers in size 12 through 16, Parachute Mayfly Patterns, again through sizes 12 through 16. And the best fly for this week was a clink hammer, anywhere from size 12 to 16 with a tan body. He's a broken, uh, uh, one of his caudal, his tail fin, he has a broken ray on it. That, Does he? Yep. 
Second fish. Got to keep a tight line on them. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> we were just about thinking about going back in. I thought, well, on, one more, one more flick as they call it around here. Oh, mom, oh my. This is, uh, looks like a good fish. It's that one with the broken caudal fin. Hard to say. I see it there now. There's still fish rising here, so I'd be able to stay a bit longer. Yeah, you get about an hour of it before dark, right? Yep. Oh yeah. This is incredible. Might not be ready. No, he's ready. Get him? Yep. Good man. This day has been epic. This day has been epic. I got a six pounder today. I got a seven pounder, uh, a bunch of four pounders, uh, one five pounder. It's been epic, just epic. This is uh, a really nice getaway. You know, when you work six, seven days a week, a lot of times of the year, and you fly into some remote area like this that is so far from everything, just beautiful around here. You know, I enjoy the scenery as much as the fishing. It's a beautiful area, so really good experience. which I thought the, f the fishing would be slow today, but it turned out it's actually pretty good. <laughs> this week at Crooks Lake, Bill used a nine foot, six weight, fast action rod. A medium action rod would also do. It's a major benefit to take a large arbor reel because sometimes the fish will run towards you and you must pick up the line quickly or you'll lose it. Something with a nice smooth drag because the fish here can be enormous and can take you on long runs. For the most part, the water here is really shallow, so all you need is a floating line. You may also want to take a nine foot, eight or nine weight rod for the trophy pike in this lake. Other than rain gear, which you absolutely need when you come to Labrador, there's some other things you really need. It can be treacherous wading in Labrador. So having a belt around your waders is a safety feature. If you fall in, your waders don't fill up with water. You can get right back up and only the top of you will be wet. That's a must. The second, a good wading staff. I don't care if you're young or old, it can be treacherous here. A wading staff, that third leg, really gives you a, a good firm footing. You need a good set of wading boots, Mine are studded, I recommend you bring studded boots. It just gives you a little extra footing that you need. And finally, eye protection. It's not only for the sun, but it helps you see in the water, and you're also winging flies around you, and there's wind here, and it can push it in your face. You need eye protection, so good polarized sunglasses.
Well, it's that time to end the show, and this time I really didn't want it to come. This trip has been nothing short of epic. I highly recommend you call Crooks Lake if you're into big brook trout. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, Hi, I'm Mark Melnick. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Now we're putting up brand new videos all the time. So if you want to be notified when a new one goes up, click that bell icon and it'll come to you as soon as it's uploaded.